welcome to another deep dive today. Um, I am really excited about this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it was inspired by this newsletter I get mm -hmm. called Love Ireland. Okay. It's that kind of like pops into your inbox and it's got a mix of travel tips mm -hmm. and recipes yeah. and, right. you know, cultural insights. Mm -hmm. A little bit of everything. Yeah. It's like a mini escape to Ireland. I love that. Every time I open it. And it really does reflect a trend that we're seeing more and more these days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, travelers aren't just like checking off landmarks from a list anymore. They're right. really looking for these authentic experiences yeah. that connect them with the soul of a place. I agree. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah. And this newsletter nails that. I'm excited to dive in. Me too. One of the things that caught my eye was this recipe okay. for homemade Irish soda bread with raisins. Interesting. Only six ingredients. Oh, wow. Less than an hour to bake. That's my kind of recipe. Have you ever made Irish soda bread? Oh, absolutely. It's a classic for a reason. Yeah. You know what's interesting about it, though? Right. Is that traditional Irish soda bread mm -hmm. is often called brown bread in Ireland. Okay. And it's made with both whole wheat and white flour. Mm. So it gives it this really dense, hearty texture. Yeah. And it's not just about the taste. Right. It's like a real connection to Ireland's culinary history. That's what I was thinking about, like uh, the simplicity of the recipe made yeah. me think, Yeah, is that tied to the history of Ireland? Okay. Maybe a time when ingredients were scarce. Interesting. And people had to make do with what they had. Right. Or maybe it's like a deeper value uh -huh. of resourcefulness. Yeah. And making the most of simple things. That is a great point. Yeah. yeah. You often see that connection right. between a culture's history and its cuisine, yeah. you know, and that resourcefulness that you mentioned is definitely a strong element of mm -hmm. Irish identity. And it's so fascinating to see right. how that translates even into something yeah. as simple as like a bread recipe. It takes you to appreciate the story behind the food. Percent. Right. Yeah. Speaking of stories. Okay. This newsletter had a section called Around the Web. Mm-hmm with links to all sorts of fascinating articles about Ireland. Cool. One that really stood out to me was about yeah. reconstructing life in Viking Age towns. Wow. Apparently, archaeologists have been digging up these incredible sites mm -hmm. over the past 60 years. Wow. And finding all sorts of artifacts yeah. that are helping them piece together what life was like back then. It's like stepping back in time. I know. And it really taps into yeah. this growing interest in historical tourism. Right. People are craving these immersive experiences that yeah. bring the past to life. Totally. And what better way to do that than oh, by yeah. walking in the footsteps of Vikings? I was reading about one site yeah. where they found evidence of houses and workshops. Wow. Even a shipyard. That's incredible. It makes you think about the people who lived there. Yeah. What their daily lives were like. Right. And how their world was both similar and vastly different from ours. And it challenges the way we typically think about history. Totally. Doesn't it? Yeah. It's not just dates and battles in a textbook. Mm -hmm. It's about real people. Right. Who lived and loved and worked and created in these places. Yeah. This kind of archaeological work mm. really helps bring those stories to light. Absolutely. And the fact that they're able to reconstruct these towns. Right. With such detail. Yeah. Is mind blowing. It is. Imagine walking down a street that's been brought back to life after a thousand years. I know. You can practically hear the sounds of the blacksmith's hammer. Right. And smell the wood smoke from the fires? Totally. It speaks to the power of archaeology. Yeah. To transport us through time yeah. and connect us to our shared human history. And for travelers, it adds a whole new dimension. Totally. Exploring a destination like Ireland. Okay, shifting gears a bit. Okay. The newsletter also had some amazing travel tips. All right. They were raving about the region of Kerry and Killarney. Okay. Saying it's perfect for a romantic getaway. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Oh, it's stunning. Really? Imagine like rugged coastlines, mm -hmm. rolling green hills dotted with sheep. Okay. Crystal clear lakes reflecting the sky. Wow. It's a landscape that just takes your breath away. I could only imagine. No wonder it's considered such a romantic destination. Yeah, cozy cottages with peat fires burning. Yes. Long walks along the coast. I love it. Maybe a boat ride on one of those lakes. Perfect. Sounds like the perfect escape. It does. In the everyday world. And it speaks to the role that nature plays uh -huh. 
in Irish culture. Okay. The landscape is so deeply intertwined yeah. with Irish identity, you know? I can see that. From the rolling hills yeah. to the wild Atlantic coast. It's a place where you can truly feel connected to the elements. And for couples. Yes. I can imagine that connection to nature. Yeah. Enhancing that sense of romance and intimacy. Absolutely. It's like the landscape itself. Yeah. Becomes part of the love story. Exactly. And the Love Ireland newsletter highlighted that. Did they? Yeah. They mentioned a wedding that took place at a place called Thomas Connolly in Sligo. Oh, wow. Sounds like the perfect setting for a celebration of love and commitment. And it speaks to that warm Irish hospitality. Yes. I've always heard that the Irish are known for their welcoming spirit. Oh, yeah. And I can imagine that shines through. 100%. Especially during special occasions like weddings. It certainly does. Yeah. And it's another reason why so many people are drawn to Ireland. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the scenery. Right. It's about the people. Yeah. And the warmth of their welcome. Well, speaking of warmth. Okay. The newsletter had a little tidbit uh -huh. that caught my eye. What's the Apparently, Ireland is experiencing an Indian summer. What? With temperatures reaching a balmy 17 degrees Celsius. Wow. Not bad for November. That's definitely unusual. Right. You usually think of Ireland as being a bit chilly and rainy, yeah. especially this time of year. It just goes to show that there are always surprises in store Yeah. when it comes to travel. Exactly. And it makes me think about how mm -hmm. our perceptions of a place can sometimes be limited. Yeah. We might have these preconceived notions. Right. But then you experience something unexpected, uh -huh. like warm sunshine in November. Yeah. It completely changes your perspective. It reminds us to stay open to new possibilities yeah. and to embrace the unexpected when we travel. I love that. And who knows, maybe this Indian summer will inspire some people yeah. to consider a trip to Ireland in the off season. I know, I'm tempted. Right. Imagine exploring those castles and those rugged coastlines yeah. without the crowds of summer tourists. Yeah. It could be a whole different experience. It certainly could. Yeah. And speaking of different experiences, okay. the newsletter also mentioned uh -huh. that some tours and activities in Ireland are likely to sell out in 2024. Really? Yeah, due to high demand. Wow. They're advising people to book in advance to avoid disappointment. That's a good reminder that planning ahead is key. Yeah. Especially if you have your heart set on certain experiences. Right. And it speaks to the growing popularity of Ireland as a travel destination. It does. Yeah. And with all that Ireland has to offer, right. from its stunning landscapes to its rich history and vibrant culture, yeah. it's no wonder that people are flocking there. Well, you've definitely got me dreaming of a trip to Ireland now. Good. But before we get too carried away with our travel plans, okay. let's talk about another delicious detail from the newsletter. Oh, yes. I know exactly what you're going to say. Right. That recipe for Irish bangers and mash with Marmite gravy. You read my mind. Yeah. Now, for those of you who haven't encountered Marmite before, okay. it's a British yeast extract spread mm -hmm. that has a very unique taste. It does. You either love it or hate it. It's definitely one of those polarizing foods. I can imagine. But I think that's what makes it so interesting. It's yeah. a reminder that food is not just about sustenance. Right. It's about culture and tradition mm -hmm. and sometimes about pushing the boundaries of our palates. Absolutely. And the fact that it's incorporated into a traditional Irish dish. Right. Like bangers and mash. Yeah. Speaks to the fusion of culinary influences yes. that you often find in a place like Ireland. Exactly. It's a reminder that cultures are constantly evolving and influencing each other. Mm -hmm. And food is a delicious reflection of that process. And it makes me wonder, Yeah. would you be brave enough to try bangers and mash with Marmite gravy? I'd definitely be willing to give it a try. You would? Yeah. I would. After all, part of the joy of travel is experiencing new things. And expanding your horizons. I think that's a great philosophy to have. Yeah, yeah. Both in travel and in life. Absolutely. And speaking of expanding our horizons, okay. this Love Ireland newsletter did something really interesting. Oh. They ended the newsletter with a request for travel tips okay. on social media. Interesting. They're basically inviting everyone to share mm -hmm. their favorite spots. Okay. Hidden oh. gems. Yeah. Advice for fellow travelers. It's a fantastic way to tap into the collective wisdom of the travel community. Right. You know, online platforms have become yeah. these incredible resources for sharing information, totally. finding inspiration, mm -hmm. connecting with people who share your passions. It's like having a global network of travel buddies. Exactly. At your fingertips. At your fingertips. And you never know what kind of insider tips you might uncover. Right. Someone might recommend 
a cozy pub with traditional music. I'd love it. A scenic hiking trail off the beaten path. Oh, yeah. Or a local artisan shop mm. with unique souvenirs. Exactly. It's about going beyond the tourist brochures yeah. and discovering those authentic experiences yeah. that really make a trip memorable. Absolutely. And it speaks to that sense of community. Right. That's so strong in Irish culture. I love that idea. Yeah. That travel can be a way to connect not only with a place, mm -hmm. but with the people who call it home. A hundred percent. And the newsletter also highlighted some specific places okay, that yeah. sound absolutely magical. Let's hear it. They mentioned Classy Bond Castle in County Sligo. Okay. Saying it boasts stunning views. Classy Bond Castle is indeed a remarkable landmark. It is. Yeah, it sits on a peninsula overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. Surrounded by breathtaking scenery. I was looking at pictures online. Yeah. And it's truly grand. It is. You can almost imagine yourself yeah. walking through those halls, mm -hmm. attending a lavish ball. Right. Gazing out at the sea. Yeah. From one of those high windows. It's like something out of a fairy tale. I know. And it's a reminder of Ireland's complex history. In what way? Well, you have these grand estates mm -hmm. that represent a certain era of wealth and power. Right. But then you also have the stories of the people who worked on these estates. Right. Like tenant farmers. Yeah. Servants, the fishermen. Right. It's all woven together. It's like those layers we were talking about earlier. Yeah. The way th the past is always present in the present. A hundred percent. And the newsletter also mentioned another landmark in Sligo. Okay. Ben Bulbin. Ben Bulbin. Okay. Which is this really distinctive flat topped mountain yeah. that dominates the landscape. Ben Bulbin is more than just a geological wonder. Is it? Yeah. It's steeped in folklore and mythology. Really? Yeah. Local legends say it was the home of a giant and a fairy queen. Oh, wow. It's a powerful symbol of Ireland's connection to its ancient past. I find that so intriguing. Yeah. How a physical landmark can become imbued with stories and beliefs mm -hmm. that are passed down through generations. It's like the mountain itself becomes a character right. in the story of Ireland. Exactly. And it speaks to that sense of wonder and imagination yeah. that's so deeply rooted in Irish culture. Mm -hmm. The landscape is not just something to admire. Right. It's a source of inspiration, mm -hmm. a place where myths and legends come to life. A hundred percent. And it makes you want to go there and experience it for yourself. Yeah. Doesn't it? It does. To climb to the top of Ben Bulbin, to feel the wind in your hair. Yes. To look out over that ancient landscape and imagine those stories unfolding. It's an invitation to connect with something larger than yourself. I like that. You know, to feel that sense of awe and wonder that travel can inspire. Right. And it brings us back to that idea of heritage and identity. Oh, yeah. That we touched on earlier. You right. Remember that quote?